welcome to the ON TV Kitchen. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at Orion Neighborhood Television, and with me is my daughter, Abby Locke. Hello. So uh, today, mm -hmm. we're going to put together one of my favorite items that Abby learned to bake over the course of the pandemic. So as uh, this is our first segment of staff coming up with mm -hmm. ideas for a cooking segment, and it's, it's like a series. So we're going to have uh, more staff members from ONTV and volunteers come in and re uh, record in the studio or in the kitchen studio of all their favorite little recipes, okay? So, but today is our first one. And how did we come about uh, pretzel bites? Um, you know, a Abby, you can share <laughs> it with us, but as all of you guys know watching that during the pandemic, we were shut in for months at a time, weeks and months, right? Mm -hmm. And you get kind of kind of wacky uh, <laughs> being, locked, being locked up inside like that. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people started baking. And the crazy thing is there was actually a shortage of flour at that time. And mm -hmm. so everybody was just home baking things and bread and different things. And Abby came up with pretzel bites. So uh, tell us about pretzel bites and how you got started with baking. Um, I mean, what was the germ and the <laughs> genesis? I mean, yeah. Um, it was just came about one day. I was bored, went on Pinterest, just looking for some stuff Easy to, to do. Easy to be bored during that time Definitely. in 2020. <laughs> um, and I came across a recipe called soft pretzel bites. And one of my favorite foods in the world is soft pretzels, yes. like the ones you'll get at football or basketball <laughs> or baseball games. And, and um, you've always loved those. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, I've got nothing to do. We've got all these ingredients at home. Why not yep. try it out? Um, and it came around to be one of the <laughs> the best recipes it, I've ever found. It, it <laughs> is. And the, the funny thing, too, is, you know, when you, you don't expect it, mm -hmm. you try recipes, sometimes they're successful, sometimes they fail, and you're going, well, that wasn't as great as... I thought it was going to be, or you had hoped it would be. But the funny thing is when she made this the first time, w my wife and I had no idea that she was doing this. Mm -hmm. And she just started buzzing around the uh, kitchen, making things, and I was like, what are you doing? I'm baking, you know? And <laughs> we're like, okay. So I'm working in my office down in the basement, uh, like most of you probably did during the pandemic and the nasty bits of that area. Um, and then all of a sudden she had a plate. And she <laughs> hands me a plate, and I'm like, these are pretzels. You know, like bread pretzels. And I love mm -hmm. bread pretzels, too. We share that in common, saying yep. up top, up over here. And so uh, I ate them like, okay, these are ridiculously good. They're stupid addictive, and mm -hmm. they're relatively easy to make, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So Very go simple. through the, this, the basic uh, ingredients and utensils and machinery we need to make pretzel bites. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to start with for the regular dough is just some all-purpose flour. You're going to want all-purpose, nothing special, nice and easy. Yeah, um, no whole wheat, right? No whole wheat. No healthy <laughs> you wanna, flour here. You want to stick with the good stuff yes. for these. Um, we're also just going to do some basic white sugar, uh, dry active yeast, and then some salt. Any kind that you can do. The recipe technically calls for kosher salt, but you can do whatever your heart desires. And I noticed, like, the, with kosher, it's a little... Uh, more coarse. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. it sticks and yep. it's, it's got that lumpy, uh, yeah. pretzel salty yep. type. Thing. We're going to use that both in the dough and on top of the pretzel bites just to make them that little oh, okay. bit extra better. Um, we're also going to use some Crisco for greasing the bowl when we want our dough to rise. Um, we're going to use some butter for topping them off to make them some just butter. a little, just some <laughs> butter. <laughs> this is usually the amount that I use for a double batch. Okay. Um, and then the special secret ingredient is our baking soda. And what we're gonna use the baking soda for is something called a wash. Mm. And basically what we do is we mix it with some really hot water and dunk our pretzel bites in. And that's, that's what why this we guy have this for. container here for some hot water. Yep. Um, and what the wash basically does is it creates that outer shell for the pretzel to actually bake. And so it has that hard outer shell. And then when you get in, it's nice and no, fluffy. Oh, yes. And, Absolutely and delicious. That's, that's the pretzel. <laughs> yes, right, that is what makes the pretzel, that's what a, makes pretzel. It a pretzel. Okay. As far as the mixing bowl, we have a mm -hmm. standard, uh, you know, aluminum stainless steel mixing bowl. Yep. You're going to want two of those. Two of those, yes. right? We have one back here as well. Yes, we have a batch mm -hmm. uh, ahead of time. You know, cooking shows, you got to cook ahead. <laughs> so we have uh, two bowls, mm -hmm. uh, just a standard old little spatula yep, mixer. Something easy to mix with. Nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. We have our, our measuring cups. Yep. Uh, what you're were the size want of these? One cup and then a quarter cup. And okay. then you're also going to want one tablespoon, one teaspoon, and one half teaspoon. Okay. And those are for all of our dry ingredients that we're going to Dry use. ingredients. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, we're talking, too, about uh, cookie sheets, right? Or yes. baking pans mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. 
So we have two here that are uh, kind of industrial gray, right? <laughs> you can say these have been well loved, right? So <laughs> these have been well loved and these are commercial grade. So these mm -hmm. heat up nice and evenly for us. Yes. Um, but you don't have to have anything like this. Nothing fancy. We have a, another cookie sheet. Can you grab that one oh, over yeah. there, Abby? Mm -hmm. We have this one cookie sheet over here. So this is more of like a standard you'd find in your regular kitchen. You can. You can find them, uh, you know, at your local retail stores or home goods stores or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And these work just as well. I like the commercial grade because they really hold the heat. It's yeah. even heat, and it, and it just evenly. works really, really yeah. nice. But you don't have to have that. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I learned. So this is all from <laughs> her, right? So every time I use these, and my wife too, mm -hmm. we'd say, "Oh, let's get some chocolate chip cookies." We make some chocolate chip cookies. We throw them right here on the baking sheet, and what happens? And the bottoms get burnt. Burnt every time, and we're always like, "Oh, you know, you bring them out, they're half cooked because mm -hmm. you don't want to burn the bottom." And during her baking exploits over the pandemic, oh, <laughs> parchment paper, right? So yes. we get a close-up of parchment. It's a little secret ingredient. It is. It's a it's a very important tool uh, for <laughs> baking, right here mm -hmm. in the kitchen, right? Because it is a, it's like a I don't call it a miracle, but it's magic. Yeah. Paper mm -hmm. doesn't burn in a hot <laughs> environment, right? So when she said she had you had parchment paper, mm -hmm. I always thought, man, that thing's gonna burst into flames yeah. in a hot oven. But it doesn't, right? It's mm -hmm. it's got a high burn point yes. and it's meant for this. Mm -hmm. And it makes it so the bottoms of whatever you're baking don't burn. I use it for everything. Cookies, cakes, it's magical. Yeah, I think I even put pork chops on them once. <laughs> I think and you so, just yeah. Slide them off. They worked out really, really well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're yep. going to set this aside. Save that for later. So this is the part, uh, so this is all the part we rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're getting into the real thing, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're, uh, what's usually the first step when we're going to assemble this recipe? Yeah, so what we want to do first is preheat our oven. Um, always make sure we've got okay. that ready. Which um, we, oh, we forgot we do have oh, a, uh, yes. oh, a saucepan. Mm -hmm. One little uh, saucepan that we use to melt our uh, butter the in, butter. correct? The butter, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody has a thousand of these and no big deal, right? Yep. So we have that back here, and we have we have already preheated the oven. Yes, you want to do it to about 450 degrees. That sounds kind of hot, um, but what that'll do is, like we explained with our wash on the pretzel bites, it's going to cook the outside with a little shell, and it's still going to have the soft doughy inside. Soft doughy inside, just yep. like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, enough of the joking around. Let's get serious on yes. our pretzel bites, because I want to eat these things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do have the recipe, and I want to remind mm -hmm. everybody that recipe will be uh, included. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see different pieces here. Uh, uh, this is TV, right? We're the, we're the video <laughs> crew, so we like editing. We like putting mm -hmm. graphics on the screen. So you're going to see all this stuff and the instructions. But we're also including the recipe um, after the fact that you can, as a PDF, or you can download it. So if you watch it um, on our website, you can pull or wherever. We'll have the recipe so you can actually use it. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, let's get going. So all here's right. our mixing bowl, right? Yep. Perfect. So cool. what we're going to start off with is we're going to mix all of our dry ingredients together. So that is our flour, our sugar, and our yeast. Um, what we're looking for flour is about two and a quarter cups. Yep. Um, and this is, uh, we're saying that it's uh, non-bleach, right? You're always trying yeah. to avoid mm -hmm. that bleached flour. Mm -hmm. And again, it is not whole wheat. I usually, I love whole wheat flour and uh, I make whole wheat pancakes mm -hmm. uh, with the flour and it's fantastic with a lot of cinnamon and all that good stuff, right? Uh, but that whole wheat would just not be good mm -hmm. in a pretzel. Mm -mm. We you should try that once. Stuff. I wonder if it'd hold it. It'd be tougher. Do you think it'd be a little, a little heavier? I would assume, probably. Okay. All right. Let me set that over to the side. All right. So we get the flour together. Two. See that nice fluffy flour. And a quarter cups. And notice it. I mean. Yes, we're measuring it, but it's not like it doesn't have to be oh, even, <laughs> right? It's just <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, you can't go wrong. Yep. And okay, then what do we got next? Our next step is to add our sugar, salt, and yeast. All right, so I can open up. Mm -hmm. our we're gonna do salt. one Oops. teaspoon of sugar, any kind of sugar, as long as it's white. White sugar is the best for these. Ta da! Okay. We're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of our salt. 
It doesn't have to really matter what kind of salt goes into this. I'm still using the kosher salt just because I like it. Uh, uh, have you ever used the sea salt? Because we do have some sea salt. I have not. The only reason it doesn't matter is because we're using warm water for our dough, so it's going to dissolve in there anyway. Uh, it's no big deal. Okay. And then we're going to do one nice and even tablespoon of our yeast. So a tablespoon. Yes. And this is what makes it rise. This is what makes it do, you know, the regular bread the stuff. The yeasty stuff, yeah. Okay, yes. Cool. And with the yeast, what are we using here? It's just uh, dry active yeast. Just dry active yeast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can show it there on the <laughs> camera. Uh, yep. There's a lot. There's a variety of yeast. Mm -hmm. This is just something we use. Um, we have a bread maker. We do. Yes. Uh, and we do pizza dough and a variety of things. We find this one works for regular bread use mm -hmm. at home and for uh, bread makers as well. Yep. And I will say the one thing with yeast, the newer it is, the better your bites are going to oh, be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a little older, so our dough won't seem to rise as much. However, if you are using like brand new, fresh out of the store yeast, it's going to rise pretty nicely. It's going to give you a lot of bread. Um, we're just going to make still work. sure. It'll still work. Oh, yeah. It'll get you there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and now we're just going to mix our dry ingredients, make sure those are nice and blended. Mm -hmm. All right there. See how you can't really see any of those yep. ingredients? It's all in Perfect. There. Exactly what we need. Okay, so we were saying something about warm water, Yes, correct? that's what's going to make our dry ingredients turn into an actual dough. Um, yep. So I'm going to take that cup so again. Ba again, basic stuff. I mean, this it's is really Home Act 101. Everybody learned how to make <laughs> dough when they were little and or with your grandma. You're hanging around watching her throw this stuff together, making biscuits or buns or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Is that going to get hot? Uh, oh, you just need warm water. Just warm it's water. Not, okay. not super hot, not super cold, just warm. So the cold, hot water is for the wash. Yes. Ah, I got it. So yeah, uh, so this is, uh, I, I can't wait to eat it. I'm like, I'm sitting here going, hmm, it's about lunchtime here as we're taping this today, and it's making me hungry. My mouth is actually watering because I know what it's <laughs> going to be. Pour that right in there. Now the okay. thing with this recipe is that you can use more water, you can use a little bit less water, just depending on the amount of flour we have so in there. So have you adjusted your water depending on how uh, I, dry or sticky it yes. is? Does it matter? Usually I adjust the water. I always start with the cup. I mix it in. At first it usually won't look like enough water. It's going to look a lot more floury as you can see right there. You can already yeah. see that dough is really floury, but you want to mix it up really nice. I like to use a flexible spatula so you can kind of like dig in there just to make sure that yeah. all of that is mixed in and see it's still pretty floury. It is. It's very dry. Um, when it gets to this point, I just give it a couple good like smushes, stir it around a little. Um, yeah, because you, you always picture dough coming out in this nice <laughs> Nice thing, round ball, right? yep. Um, and when it gets to this point, I'm noticing I'm probably going to need a little bit more water. So what I do is I take my tablespoon, because I don't want to do another cup, because that's going to be way oh, too yeah, much yeah. water. So I just go in with a tablespoon. I'll fill it up. Not all the way. We kind of want to add a little so bit as we go. Of, we're just kind of bit by bit making it the consistency yep. that you want, right? Yep. And we like we okay. eyeball this part. There's no really specific measurement. I'll give it a little, and I'll just mix that in until it's about like a tacky pizza dough is kind of what we're ah. looking for. Not too sticky, not too dry. Um, now have you we ever used that like a, together. you know, a mechanical mixer or anything? You always no. do it by hand. You always want to do this by hand because a mechanical mixer will actually break it up more. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it a little so you less have it together. flaky like this and yeah. lumpy. Because mm -hmm. okay. when we go in and knead it is when it's going to really get yeah. all together. Okay. And you can always just test that little if you want to stick your hand in there, you can feel how it's warm because we use that warm oh, yeah, water. Oh, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm actually just going to add a little more water. You can see all that flour still yeah. at the bottom right a there. More there. A little extra. There That's we are. not a whole lot. I'm going to actually here, grab a little it, more. If you want to do this. How about I just put a little here and then we can spoon it in? A little bit, yeah. Is okay? Mm -hmm. And you want to keep mixing with your spatula until all of those little bits are fully incorporated. And then you can get in there and start kneading your dough. All right. I'm going to pour that kind of here. I'm just going to do a little bit at the bottom. Ooh, look at that danger. Just like that. Usually just eyeball it, and if it's too much water, you can always add a little more flour just to make sure that that is evened out. It also gives you a little more dough. Who's going to be upset with more pretzel bites? <laughs> uh, I will not be upset. Nobody. I need more. Mm -hmm. More the better. Yep, exactly. Yeah, these are so, uh, so tasty, and really, I mean, how long have we been at this right now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not very long. Maybe no, five minutes of yeah. actually combining mm -hmm. things. Yep. And um, okay. one of our staff members, I think it was Tracy, uh, uh, one of our staff members here at ONTV, who is going to have her own recipe pretty soon in her own segment. 
Uh, she was saying, like, when she cooks, she likes to have music playing in the background. <laughs> and I know, so do you. You mm -hmm. usually have your earbuds usually. in and uh, rocking out to some <laughs> tunes or listen to a podcast while you're mixing this stuff up. Yep. So, yeah, it's, uh, I always, I'm finding I like cooking more and more, mm -hmm. um, especially when I want to try something new. You know, you get used to the same palate or the same menu. Yes. You know, you get into those ruts, especially when mm -hmm. you're in your family. And you're always looking for something new. So this is a cool little treat to throw together yep, and exactly. everybody to dig on this. Mm -hmm. So Okay. All right. So when your dough is looking like this, you're about ready to get it kneaded or kneaded in knead there. Kneaded or um, hold, it, hold it a longer. See? Yep. It's, it's kind of flaky, kind of lumpy, mm -hmm. right? It's not yes. that... Uh, Perfectly round. <laughs> and there's no oil, right? So nope, there's no, no oil, oil in this. Sometimes when you do buns and breads, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, you have to you oil up the bowl and you put it in there yeah. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So so what's next? Okay. Where we're going so, with this? So this is where you can kind of do whatever you, you want to do when you knead the dough. I personally like to keep it in the bowl, but if you want to flour a flat surface and kind of knead it out here, you're welcome to. Um, so I just kind of go in there with my hands, make sure that all of that excess dough at the bottom is kind of incorporated, and we just kind of go right in. So knuckles, the yes. fist, and knuckles you're just smashing that stuff together, right? And hard pressure. Yep, this gets it mixed better than any kind of utensil okay. could. And while you're kneading, if you notice that your dough is pretty flaky, you can add more water or you can wait a little bit. Um, Just to let it work it's, its way through. Yes, it's kind of, it's a lot about eyeballing when you get to this stage. Cool. And you want to press down really hard. You want to go in circular motions to make sure that that dough is fully incorporated. See, and this a is a little different pressure. than if you're making, uh, let's say, biscuits. Do you ever have, you know, yeah. I, I used to make biscuits uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, special dinners or whatever, and it was about layering and folding and mm -hmm. folding and rolling pins and yes. rolling it all, and you just over and over and over again to get those layers of fluffy, fluffy uh, biscuits, yeah. right? And they pop up in these layers. Mm -hmm. This is completely different. This is just smash it together, yes. get it combined. <laughs> Which is, yep. it's working pretty good and actually mm -hmm. does look like a pizza dough. A little, yeah, exactly. little heavier. This is what it looks like while you're kneading it. <laughs> okay, hold it, hold it's it kind steady of so easier we can see. To see. see. Mm -hmm. So that's incorporating to the ball. Yep, that's about halfway. You want to knead this dough for about a good five minutes to make sure that it's okay. fully incorporated, fully mixed, and ready to start rising. So when you started building your, say building pretzels, but <laughs> baking your pretzels the yeah. first time around, did you not do it as long sometimes? Did you find, I mean, is this trial and error? Or is yeah. it like, oh, I made them perfect the first time I ever did it? <laughs> well, the first time I did this recipe, it actually called for the five minutes of kneading, but I only did it for about two or three because I got tired. <laughs> um, but you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that it is fully kneaded all the way. And what happened? What? The, the dough didn't rise. At all? Not much. It actually didn't rise that much. So you want to make sure that you are kneading it for the pita. proper amount. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pretzel bites were a little flatter, I will say. Not as big. Yeah. Um, but you just want to make sure that you're getting in there. And I can say, like, yeah, when we cut them into squares or rectangles, right, different mm -hmm. shapes. Yes. That they do get thick. I mean, it, they mm -hmm. get about that thick, and it turns almost into a, we call them bites, but they're almost like pretzel cubes or <laughs> pretzel rhombuses you know mm -hmm. so um yeah i can understand that so yeah this is getting yep. there okay so our oven is at four we heard it beep earlier yes. so that's it it's at 450 mm -hmm. and ready to go um how do you lay it out uh, to cut them, do you use? Uh, do you want to use a cookie sheet or a plate? We can or just use a floured use a surface if you like. Surface, but the important okay. part is that when you're done kneading, you need to let it rise for a little bit because oh, that yeast right. needs to activate. That's right. Because um, this is technically bread, so we are going to let it rise for a little bit. Okay. Um, I usually set it down for about 40 minutes, um, just to make sure that it is fully risen and ready to bake. Okay. Um, well, that that feels. Good. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. good. When you so are finished kneading, it's going to look like this, something like that. Nice little blob of dough. Mm -hmm. It looks like pizza dough. It's not sticky to touch. I've just got flour all over my hands. Yeah, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't indent or bounce back. It is pretty well, solid. It, this is yes. very dense. If you do a little like finger press, it, it stays yeah, it in holds, there. Yeah. It doesn't bounce back. Um, so that's what you're looking for. And now we are going to let it rise in a greased bowl for about 40 minutes is what I do. Um, that's why we have this Crisco here. Okay. You want to just so grease that bowl nicely. Just a Crisco with a bowl. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Tessa, I'm moving around too fast for you. Right, so it's just the standard stuff, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, you can also use about a teaspoon of oil if you don't have any Crisco yep. at your house. Yeah. Just something to make sure that that bowl is greased and ready to go. Okay. Now. So we did prepare. <laughs> yes. Um, earlier today. Mm -hmm. a batch. Here we can do a comparison. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here is a, and it's we don't the optical illusion. Yes, this bowl is bigger <laughs> than yes. this little bowl. So, mm -hmm. but you can noticeably see that it's about twice the size. Yep. After it's risen, and you said that's been about an hour now. About an hour now, but yeah. I usually let it rest for forty minutes. Yeah, we're about an hour because of the setup and prep for the, uh, mm -hmm. the recording today. But yeah, you can see that yep. it is, and it still has, it's a little crusty on the outside, mm -hmm. and. It's it's a little more spongy because yes. it has has done its job. The yeast yep. is working over over time, doing its thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, so we'll set so, this aside. Yes, we will actually put that in this bowl once this. Is okay. Down. All right, so we'll slide that. Mm -hmm. Or let me just put it back here. Okay. All righty, and now what we want to do is I'm going to take this out and flour some kind of flat surface. You can do like a cookie sheet, you can do um, a cutting board, whatever you like. But for now, we're just going to take it out because this bowl is greased, so we don't want the flour or we don't want the actual dough to be sticking to our table. All Not right. too much flour, just enough. It's also good to get some on your hands. And now we are just going to take that right out of Peel our bowl. Peel it out. Yep, and um, it didn't tear or anything. Nope. And so nice you and laid easy. it grease side down. Yes. Is that is that on purpose? Yep. So that grease side gets floured. Ah. We want to make sure that this isn't sticking. We want to make sure that it is nice and even, just like we need it to be. Okay. So I can move this into yep, the next. Yep. You can move bowl. that over and make sure that Whoa, when. This is thick. Yeah. Um, make sure Whoa. that when your dough is rising in its bowl, you cover it with some kind of towel and keep it in a warm environment. That'll make sure that it rises the best that it can, okay. and you so get all the, all everything you need out of all that the yeast. good stuff. Okay. Yes. So we've transported it over, mm -hmm. and then we'll cover it up. This will be our second batch later after we're yeah. off, the, off camera. This is the... <laughs> That's the, the for home this batch. This is my... What? I was going to say, this is my batch. Mm. Okay. So we're covering yep. that up and we're setting that aside. Set it somewhere warm, not too hot, not too cold. You want to make sure that that is just rising in a normal bread rising environment. Now we've uh, mm. set stuff on top of your my our refrigerator before because yep. there is heat up there too, mm -hmm. right? Yep, you we've, can do it. We've anywhere. even taken down and put it into like our basement where the furnace is. Yes. But so slightly warmer uh, mm -hmm. in that room and you, and have it covered and it does its thing. Yep. Okay, so we're All right. spreading this out. Yes. So once your dough is risen and it's out of its greased bowl and you've got it nicely floured on both sides, what you want to do is just kind of stretch it out. I don't really use a rolling pin for this part. I just kind of let the dough go where it wants to go, stretch it out. Yeah, there's some anyway weight to that dough. Oh yeah, it's very heavy. If you want to feel how heavy well, that I, is, I felt it when I moved <laughs> it to the other bowl. It's mm -hmm. it's very dense. Yes. But that's but that's the the nature of a pretzel, right? I mean. Oh yeah. Uh, it is. It's a dense. It's a dense bread. It's heavier mm -hmm. um, and super tasty. Oh yeah, and I just kind of I let it stretch itself out. I can use my hands to stretch Very it out. Cool. But you want it looking kind of something like this, nice and long. And both sides are well floured, so it'll move around on the yeah. surface nice and easily. Because we don't really want it to stick. We need it to just stay. Do its thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we have. Over here. All right, and once it's nice and stretched out, we can start cutting it into pieces. Now, uh, you mentioned when we were uh, setting up today, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't bring a pizza cutter. Yeah, I usually use a pizza cutter for this just because it glides a little smoother across nice, the dough. Nice, even lines mm -hmm. and things. But we have a serrated, uh, like a steak knife, yeah. uh, which should really work. So you just draw it across mm -hmm. the dough. I'll let yep. you do it. You're the you're the master <laughs> at this. You've done and this. And the the nice part about these pretzel bites is they're homemade, so you don't have to do perfect straight lines. You can just kind of go, and they can be uneven. They can be whatever they need Saw to it, be. Maybe. Yep. You can get there. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> this will stretch yeah, it out a little bit. I can see where a pizza yeah. uh, the uh, pizza dough cutter or pizza cutter will come in handy. It's giving that dough a little extra stretch, though. I don't mind. Okay. It's kind of nice. Ta da. <laughs> You just slice it right through any size, any thickness. Yeah, no, no, big no deal. rules, right? This no. is uh, irregularity mm -mm. is a, a yep. good thing. Exactly. And now you're gonna just cut your dough into sizes. And if it's if they're too big, like this one is pretty large, you can just you know, cut them in half. Yeah. Slice it right in half. You can make them make however em, big or them however small. Because they do grow, so oh, even if you don't want them too small. Though, no. Right? Mm -mm. Just do I know, what I, you got I've gotten do. a couple plates of pretzel bites from her uh, while I was <laughs> working that were. Rather big, I'm like, yeah, because 
Yeah. Who, it's a big pretzel, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And they don't have to be perfect. You can make them look homemade however you want. Yeah. Just nice and easy. So far, um, right? I mean, on a scale of one to ten, this is a one. Yeah, <laughs> pretty easy. Maybe two. Maybe with the yeast, it makes it a two. Yeah. But, little know. little chemistry there. Mm -hmm. So let me move some of these things out of the way. Oops. Um, okay, I'm put these over here in the mm -hmm. sink. And I'll get the cookie sheet ready. Yeah, if you actually want to start getting the wash ready, Ooh, the that wash. would be wonderful. The okay, wash is one of the most important parts of these because that's what makes the pretzel, like I said earlier, the pretzel. Okay, so we need how much water? We need, um, give me a moment, we need half a cup of very, very, very hot water. Okay, so... So you can put it in the microwave for a minute or so, or you can boil it, whatever you want. The water doesn't have to be boiling. It just needs to be very, very hot. Half a cup. Yep, not too much. Because we're not soaking the pretzels, we're just dunking them in You're very just quickly. dunking them in, yes. and you want to make sure that the, the the baking soda isn't like diluted too much. Is no. that correct? Yep. Okay, so we're looking at half a cup. Let me see where we're at on here. I am at three quarters of a cup. Mm, that's fine. Is it is it that okay? It's yeah, it's okay. Okay. Just as long as it's somewhere near half a cup, not too much, not too little. Somewhere near. <laughs> And as you can see, the pretzel bites I'm cutting are very messy. They're all over the place in shapes they are and messy. sizes. But that's nice because that's what makes them homemade. What's yeah, yeah. It gives them that uh, little nice touch. It, it does. And, and the cool thing, too, about baking and making our own recipes, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, make, I love Italian food, so I experiment with different types of Italian food and seasoning. It's like you know what's in your food. Yes, exactly. Right? I know the ingredients that I put in there. I know that, let's say, my chicken's fresh or my flour is non-bleach and it's mm -hmm. uh you know environment environmentally sound we're just reading the labels <laughs> on our flower yeah. and we're learning about b corporations and being good to the corp yep. uh, environment and mm -hmm. you know so if uh pioneer sugar i think we have here right yep so that's a michigan company that's a uh, pioneer sugar uh sugar beets here in michigan right mm -hmm. can't All tell right. how hot that is that should be good should be oh yeah that's perfect okay Alrighty, and once your See, water is ready, perfect. How great is that? <laughs> once your water is ready, we're gonna use two tablespoons of our baking soda here for the wash. Okay. It's gonna be a little fizzy when you put it in, just because of how hot the water Chemistry. is and the way that the baking soda reacts. Two yep. tablespoons. Two tablespoons. All right. Let's get that going. Okay. And you'll see it fizz up in a moment. Oh yeah, it looks like uh, Alka Seltzer going <laughs> there. Indigestion. Okie doke. Okay, two tablespoons. Here's yes. the second one. Second tablespoon. And you can give that a good mix. Give it a good go. Mm -hmm. Look at that chemistry going. Yeah, perfect. And that lets us know that the water is just as hot as we need it to be. I did something right today. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. So we've got our pretzel bites, we've got our wash. Our final step before we start dunking them in is the parchment paper. Parchment, the magic mm -hmm. of parchment <laughs> paper. Yep, and you're just going right, to stretch so that out. Let me put that up yes. here. And mm -hmm. we'll go here. So, move the bites out of the way. I don't think I've worked on the counter this small. <laughs> <laughs> in my kitchen, I'm like everywhere. i got stuff all over the place when I'm mm -hmm. making things. Oh, yeah. All right. Is that good enough? That's good, yeah. It does have terror on it. Right? Ah! There we go. Boy, this likes to roll up. Mm -hmm. Flip it upside down. Flip it upside it. down. And then flatten it out. Okay. Alrighty. Here, I'll hold it while you Perfect. Okay. throw them on there. So sometimes that baking soda will sink to the bottom of your water if you just give it a little stir. And I like to use tongs with my pretzel bites just so you can get them in and out of that hot water a lot easier. What we're going to do is we're just going to take one, we're going to dip it in. It in. Wow. Yep, you just drop it right in, and then you grab it with the tongs. Get nice a little, little fizz. shake. May all, get all of that excess water out there. Just lay it right on your tray. And you just continue to do so. You can mix up that baking soda a little bit every now and then. Get all the excess water off, and then do it again. Ta -da. Have you ever done, like, pretzel sticks? Because we know one of our favorite... Uh, uh, grocery stores has um, pretzel bread. Yeah. Um, so technically, this recipe can work with just regular pretzel bread. I have done like larger like pretzel bites, which were just like mini loaves of bread, and it <laughs> does work. 
Um, I think it works the best with just pretzel bites simply because of the wash. Okay. Um, it's a lot easier to do the wash when oh, that, it is just true. with smaller bites. If you had a, um, like a loaf, I mean, we're, yeah. we're talking a big lump of uh, dough. Mm -hmm. Yes. And or let's say pretzel buns, if you're going to do like make pretzel buns for yep. let's say hamburgers or mm -hmm. something. That would include a more uh, complicated wash. You'd actually have to boil water and baking soda on a stove before uh, putting it in there and you'd actually have to let it sit in that mixture for a little while. See, she does like pretzels. She researched all the different <laughs> types of pretzels. I did. Bread and buns <laughs> and loaves and all that kind yep. of stuff. But it is just rinse and repeat until you fill your entire baking sheet up. One batch of these will fill two regular cookie sheets. So it actually does make quite a few pretzel bites. They go quick though. They do. They don't last long. <laughs> Once Should they're out of the oven, it doesn't seem like you made a whole bunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moving along. Um, yep. You want to make sure every side of that pretzel bite is covered in the wash so it'll bake evenly. Yeah, dunk it in there. Mm -hmm. you and you're going one at in. a time, you yes. know. Yes. You can do more than one um, if it you want Seems like to. if you miss them, they could get a little ultra soggy with the water. Yeah, exactly. In, in the dough, right? You don't want to be them to be in there too long, just enough to have all of their edges covered. Because if it is in there too long, the water will seep through the cracks, and it'll create that shell on the inside as well. Very cool. Ta-da! Well, uh, while we're doing this, if you're interested in sharing your recipes with us at ONTV, um, this is an, kind of an ongoing series that we're going to do. We love cooking, and it always seems like when, when uh, staff gets together, you have a, we have a little uh, lull in the action here at the studio. We seem to talk about food. <laughs> We're talking about, hey, what did you do with the crock pot? Or a, uh, uh, did you get an air fryer? Or did you use an air fryer? That sort of thing. But if you have your own favorite recipe, share it with us at ONTV. Um, you can email us at uh, ONTV at OrionOnTV.org or uh, just uh, give us a call at 248-393-1060 and say, hey, I have a recipe. And or drop off your recipe at the studio at the Orion Center at 1349 Joslin Road. And uh -huh. so we can see we finally got our, our full sheet. Nice yep. close up there. And now before we put these in the oven, we've got to do two more steps. Yep. We're going to take our kosher salt, our nice big grains of salt here, and we're just going to sprinkle them right over top. This is the part you can choose more salt, less salt, whatever you're feeling. Just a good shake. Yeah. Make sure that those pretzel bites are And the are size covered. of the salt's pretty good coming yeah. out. It's, it's not pouring out, right? No. Mm -mm. So it's just like yeah. You know, like a pretzel, it's just kind of sprinkled or snowed on there, right? Uh, yep, and you can do it to your taste. You can save some. You could even do a cinnamon sugar instead of mm. butter when they come out, if that's what you're craving. That would be or tasty. you can do your salt. And now that that salt is that. on there, before we put it in the oven, we're going to let these rest for five minutes. Five minutes. That is so that salt stays on there when it bakes and it doesn't just bake on top. And so that wash can really get in there and make sure that that shell is okay, created. Okay, so it's going to rest a little bit. Yeah. And while those are resting, we can start our second one if we want. Okay, we can. And yep. with, with the magic of editing, <laughs> I can clap my hands or whatever. We'll dip mm -hmm. to black, we'll be right back, or we'll dissolve to a, a nice, happy scene, and we'll come mm -hmm. back with uh, all of these ready to go in the oven. Yes. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Okay, yes. so we have tray number two all situated, mm -hmm. just like uh, tray number one, okay? Yep, and, and these ones can rest while we put our first yes, batch in the oven. we want to eat these. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're going to set this one aside. Now, we were yes. saying, um, why do they need to rest mm -hmm. after we dip them, 
uh, and then salt them. Why do they have yep. to rest like uh, five minutes? It's to let that salt kind of stick to the bread while also letting that wash work its magic. So it's going to still create that hard outer shell while also letting the salt seep into the pretzels. So it'll be a little salt, more salty all around and it'll just make it that much better after you pop it out of the and oven. And since these have been resting, uh, they don't really look, uh, detail wise it's hard to tell, but having the wash soak into mm -hmm. the dough, that's where the magic is, right? Yes. That's, that's mm -hmm. where it all, uh, it all works. Yep. Okay. And before we throw these in the oven, we do want to start melting our butter. Because these will cook yes. before. These will cook very fast, okay. um, and we want our butter to be melted. So once you take them right out of the oven, you can put that butter on top. All right, so go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll throw that in there. Yep. You can use about three to four tablespoons of butter per, um, per batch. I usually like to use a little more just because I like mine a little more buttery. Well, and the cool thing, too, and this is salted butter. Yes, salted butter. Yes, so you have the full sticks of butter, right, which are very nice. But the cool thing is is I know uh, Abby took it and used it already, but you have mm -hmm. these pre, pre-measured smaller uh, sticks. I really like these, especially cooking, you know, instead of digging into, let's say, a butter dish or guessing and, you know, having to cut this in half, a full-size, uh, you know, a stick of butter in half and then have it lingering in your fridge for a while. So having these smaller ones are very handy. Um, uh, to just use what you need and four tablespoons is what that's your half right that's your half a stick of butter so um, I really liked when they started doing this is it more packaging yes can there be more waste yes but it makes your life easier when you're baking yes it helps yeah all right okay. so we've got our butter melting and now we can throw our first batch into the okay. oven we're gonna bake them for about six and a half minutes that's to make sure that the outside is cooked Good. Okay, um, good, while also getting the inside baked just enough to have them have that little right, pretzel-y so, bite. So here's a scary bit, we're putting it in. Okay. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh yeah, that's hot. Yep, and you're going to want to do it for about <coughs> six and a half minutes. Now do we set the timer or do you kind of just peek and, so you and I <laughs> bake differently. So when yeah. I cook, um, like you'll ask me, how long are you cooking it for? Or mm -hmm. how long do you heat it for? I don't know, I eyeball it. Like if I'm cooking yeah. a pizza, I never mm -hmm. time it. I always look at it and go, yes, when my, my cheese is a certain texture or burntness, uh, <laughs> yeah. we know it's done, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So do you usually set your timer? I usually or? do set my timer. Um, I okay. do periodically check it though. I don't um, know how to do the timer. We, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You can do it at uh, home, anyway. you can do it on your phone, Okay, whatever. so it's uh, there, so. Yes. We know when yeah, it's, we know it's done. Doing. Okay, so we're mm -hmm. gonna double check our butter because we yep. don't want this thing to boil, right? No, we do not. Just do it on like medium heat, a little lower than medium heat, just to make sure that yeah. that butter is melted. Get the job done. Mm -hmm. And then we have, how are we going to drizzle? Or is um, it a dip? I usually have a spoon or one of those like wash, like brushes that you oh, can yeah, brush okay. onto them. Or you can um, do this, you know, like pour it on. Yeah, I or? usually, for now we can pour it on okay. there. Um, the important part is that you're going to do this butter as soon as your bites are out of the oven. Oh, um, okay. You'll hear, usually it'll sizzle a little bit, which makes it oh. just a little more fancier. Because um, <laughs> those bites that, are I going can taste to be hot. It now. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can, this is, we can put the uh, cookie sheet on here. We're going to yep. clean up our little work surface mm -hmm. here. And move stuff aside because yep, we want everybody around. to see <laughs> yes. those pretzels when they come out of mm -hmm. the oven. Throw that over there. Yep. Um, what other things have you baked? Because um, um, you really got into bread there for a while. You were yeah. making some good stuff. Mm -hmm. I've made pretzel bites. I've made makeshift pretzel bread. Um, I've made a sort of like pita naan yes, bread. Yes, um, that was pretty that darn was, good. It was also very, very simple. It was, was it? Um, flour, salt, baking powder, and baking soda. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that recipe at home. It goes by a lot of different names. Yeah, um, we also topped it off with a lot of different things. It's very versatile. Yes, um, so as I recall, <laughs> It was my idea to do cinnamon mm -hmm. and sugar. It was. And uh, uh, brush it with butter, mm -hmm. and then I put cinnamon and sugar on it. And yep. my kids were going, mm -hmm. I don't know about that, because uh, we were that. just eating it, right? It was just, yes. you're just eating it plain. I go, mm -hmm. man, this would be great. And then it turned into like, uh, like cinnamon bites from, I don't know, Domino's or one of those places, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. those, it was very good. those <laughs> treats. And it was, I'm like, yes. I said, I'm eating them. You don't have to. And then what happened? <laughs> Next time she made it, cinnamon sugar. 
All right, so we are yep. about two minutes out from pulling mm -hmm. them out. And you can always double check. Yep, you can see those are rising. Yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to take them out until you see that kind of like pretzel texture and that brown top. So it will be brown top. Yes. Okay. Now, we were talking about uh, 450 on the oven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, we have an older stove mm -hmm. and over, uh, older yeah. oven. So we usually have to, if it says if it's 450 or 500, mm -hmm. we got to back it off because yeah. that thing is a lot hotter than some of the modern yes. stoves. So mm -hmm. I see on here that it was asking for 500. Yep, that was the um, that was the recipe's first initial temperature. Um, and then I backed it down to 450 for our oven and I kind of keep it at there because it's not, it's very, very hot, but yeah. it's not 500 degrees hot. Um, and it makes sure that those pretzels bake evenly and bake as a pretzel should. Um, okay. So if you've got a more modern oven, you can do that 500 degrees if you're comfortable with it. If not, you can do it for 450 and kind of, and just you know, keep an eye on it. yeah, keep an eye on your pretzel bites. You can take your time baking them however you <laughs> want, <laughs> however you want your bites to be baked. All right, so make sure our butter is still yep. staying in its liquid state. Yes. And we'll and double check. Just check on them every now okay. and then. We got Still about going. two more minutes or so on those. All right, so uh, the next time you see us, we pull them out of the other. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248 393 1060 or visit OrionONTV.org today. Okay, so it's been about seven and a half, seven and eight, and a half minutes. eight minutes. Yeah. So uh, we're finding with this oven that 450 is true 450, <laughs> and so we probably should have gone 500 or yes. whatever. But you know, you just keep an eye on. Them. We've been yep. opening the door, taking a peek, yep. and they are nice and brown. Yep, they are ready to go. So ready to go. They look like pretzels. Ooh, they do. Oh boy. All right, and All now right. at this oh, point, slide off the, the parchment paper. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll, I'll hold it up so you can do yep. your thing. So, um, and this is this is the buttery goodness, right? Yes. This is this is the uh, this is the show. Yep. So what you want to do, you can take a kind of brush or a spoon, just scoop out some of your melted butter and just pour it right Drizzle. on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you use uh, like the we have uh, cooking brushes to yes. baste. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. like you can dip it in things and rub it on uh, turkeys yep. and oils and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And that, that usually ensures that the pretzels get more evenly coated with butter. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever you have is just fine as long as, as long as they're coated in some fashion, you should be good. And you can just kind of take some butter with each of them. I hope you guys can see that on camera, on. nice glistening, mm -hmm. you know, looks great. Yep. Ta -da. And you let that butter soak in there, so they are crusty. You can hear yeah, it crunch on the top, I don't know if right? I don't know if you can hear that, really well. but they are crunchy on the top. Mm -hmm. But yep. when the butter soaks in, it kind of softens yes. that outer casing mm -hmm. and just makes it um, yep. uh, crazy tasty, as we say. Mm -hmm. And I did, while we were baking these, I added an extra tablespoon of butter. Um, just because you, know, you no. can never have too much, <laughs> um, but when you are making a batch like this and you have two trays of these, you're going to want to have a little extra, um, too much, you know, you can never have too much butter when you're making these. Well, you can, mm. but we're not going to tell anybody. No. Okay, looks Alrighty. great. And so. if you've noticed that some of them are lacking in butter, you can always go back. These look pretty good. That spoon worked yes. out pretty good. So, mm -hmm. as you can see here, it's still kind of riding around that parchment paper with the butter, but uh, it soaks in. You can see, kind of gets that little uh, shiny glaze to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to eat one, but I know yeah. it would. My head would burst into flames because yes. it is very hot. Mm -hmm. So you let them cool for a little bit, but they are ready to go. They and are. They are instant eat and mm -hmm. fabulous and. <laughs> they smell like pretzels, yes. and they smell very, very good. And they make do. sure that the stovetop's off. 
yep, we're going to put our other batch in. But for this episode <laughs> of uh, Inside the ONTV Kitchen here with this recipe with Abby and myself, um, I think it's a success. Very much a And success. I, I know the ONTV staff are like, okay, turn the cameras off, time to eat. <laughs> so I um, want to thank you for tuning in. And again, the recipe should be attached to this video file or, or this program. And uh, if you have your own recipes you would like to share with us, uh, reach out to ONTV. You can email us at ONTV at OrionOnTV.org or give us a call at 248-393-1060 or stop by the studio at the Orion Center at 1349 Joslin Road and just hand over those recipes and we'll mm -hmm. experiment with them. And if you want to get on and share your recipe with us and you know either bake with myself or one of the uh, another staff member or a friend, come on in. We're looking for people to have fun and uh, share recipes and cook just like this in our kitchen. So um, that's it. Abby did yep. a nice job. Uh, <laughs> uh, heading up to Michigan State here mm -hmm. soon. So go green. Go white. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to eat these pretzel bites. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. I'm Ian Locke. And I'm and, Abby. And this is Abby. <laughs> see you later. See ya.